this lesson, we'll finish creating the wires in our scene. Let's begin. We've got a lot of other areas that we can add wires to, so we're going to move through them a little bit faster due to them all being basically the same technique. Let's talk about the areas with the 3D wires now. So first, we're going to go over here and turn back on the 3D wires collection. We'll just click on this little white box to turn them back on. And then before we do any more drawing, let's create a new layer for these drawings. So on this right side, inside this little green tab here, we're going to click on this plus button to add a new layer, double click on this, and then type in 3D wires, and then hit enter. This will ensure that these new lines are on their own layer. So if we ever wanted to hide them for any reason, that's possible using this little eyeball icon here next to them. So we can see an example of that here. If I turn off this eyeball next to column wires, that will hide these wires. And if I turn it back on, now we can see them again. One thing to note, however, is that if you ever want to go back to a different layer after creating a new one, you do need to make sure that you select it before drawing on it. So if you wanted to go back and add more column wires if you weren't done here, you have to click on this column wires to turn it blue to let you know that you have it selected, then do your drawing, and then switch back to the other layer that you want to draw on. So it does take a little bit of remembering to switch back and forth, but I promise you it's definitely worth the effort that if you ever want to get rid of a specific wire for a different render or for an animation, it's really nice being able to go through and selectively hide different wires. And now with our 3D wires layers still selected, highlighted in blue, we're ready to begin adding detail to these 3D wires here that we just turned back on. For these 3D wires, all we're going to be adding is detail. This will help add detail to these pre-existing 3D wires that are already spanning the gaps. So we don't need to draw the initial wire like we did up here. They already exist. We're just going to add more detail to these. This will also help blend them in with the entirely hand-drawn wires that we drew up here. So by adding hand-drawn details on top of these 3D wires, they'll sort of mesh with the rest of the scene. So first, let's decide which of these 3D wires we're going to be drawing on. Now that we're a bit more comfortable with drawing, let's choose a 3D wire that's a bit closer to the camera. So in this case, let's choose this one here. So it's the first wire to the left of this ladder. So over here in the right view, you can see that it's this wire here. Now let's zoom in on this side here. We're going to hold shift and then right click on the side of this triangle mount here. So anywhere here on the side, we're just going to place our 3D cursor. Now go up to the top and make sure you're set to the front view because that's the direction that we'll be drawing. And then over here in our right view, you might find it easier to draw from an orthographic view like we did for the first wires. To switch to this flat view, we're going to go over to this top symbol here, and we're going to click on this little bubble here that says negative Y. So we'll click that, and it'll just jump us right into this nice flat view. And then we can zoom back in, and we know it's this wire that we're drawing on because that's where our 3D cursor is sitting. And now we can start drawing new wires on top of this 3D wire. We're going to be drawing similar details to the wires we drew before with loops and cuts and droops in them. You'll also probably want to switch your radius from 0.015, if that's what you were on, we're going to set it back to 0.02 instead. And now let's just start drawing some wires. So in this case, I'm going to start up here, and I'll have them start wrapping around this 3D triangle mount. We can have them go down here and start snaking back and forth. And then we can just continue this line here, maybe adding a larger droop here, going back and forth, maybe a smaller one. And then maybe we'll end this right here with a line cut. So we'll go over here and then just go straight down to make it look like somebody cut the wire with something. And then while you're drawing this view here, you might want to look over here to make sure that these lines don't land anywhere that kind of obscures them. So if I drew this cut line here a little earlier, it might have lined up with this edge and looked a little weird. So keep that in mind when you're drawing over here on the right side, just to glance to the left and see how it looks. Let's quickly finish this detail on this line. So I'll have the line start here parallel to it, a little bit shorter, and then maybe I'll draw a little loop here before it ends, and have it snake around to the bottom. So now if I zoom out and see what I drew over here. After drawing these basic wires on top of the 3D wires, you could add even further detail by adding thin detail wires on top of the original detail wires. So you can really see that you can get as detailed as you want with this. So for these smaller details, let's go up to the radius, and we're going to set this even tinier. So we're going to set this to 0 0.01. And then it doesn't really matter which side you start on. I'm just going to start over here on the left. Now I'm going to take these smaller wires and wrap them around the original drawn wires that I just did. And just have them go across these gaps. And zoom out here. And then maybe this thin wire here just completely avoids this cut in the line. And droop down. Catch back onto this wire here. Go back up over. And then just continue drawing these details down these loops. Maybe it goes up and attaches now to the 3D wire, and really just do whatever you'd like. 
and then we'll finish it over here, going up over the back. How you add detail to your wires is entirely up to you. One thing I wouldn't suggest though is that you try to add detail to every single 3D wire in this scene, as many of them are really far away from the camera and you're going to be drawing lines so small and back in the darkness that you really won't notice your efforts. So I would just pick out some of the ones that are closer to the camera and just kind of dot them back and forth, so maybe this one, maybe one down here, this one in the back, and then maybe one down here. So maybe like four or five total and just space them out because if you start drawing wires on every single one of them, especially like this one back here where they really overlap, you're going to kind of just be wasting your time drawing wires that you really won't ever see from the camera. One other important tip is don't forget to move your 3D cursor after you draw your wires. So now that I'm done with this one, if I wanted to draw, say, on this line down here, I do have to remember to move my 3D cursor, or else from this view, it'll look like I'm drawing them correctly, but then if I spin around, I'll notice that I was actually drawing wires for this 3D wire out in space below the first one. So make sure you move your 3D cursor to the correct 3D wire when you're drawing them. And now before we finish this lesson, let's go through each of the remaining areas that I'd recommend that you place wires on your scene to match the look and feel of the reference. I won't be making a new layer over here for each of these areas just to save myself some time, but I highly recommend that you do for your own render. For now, I'm just going to go over here, hit the plus sign, double click on this, and name this test. But if I was doing this for real, I would definitely be making a new layer for each of these areas that I show you. Okay, so with that warning out of the way, let's go through some of the areas quickly that you might want to consider adding wires to your image, and a brief explanation of how I would do it. The first area would be that partial bridge on the left wall, but first we'll need to turn this collection back on, so we can do that over here on the right side. We're just going to click this little checkbox here to turn on the left side. I'm going to increase the radius of my brush back to 0 0.035, just so they're a little bit thicker. Now we can spin our camera around. And then I'll hold shift and right click on the side of this bridge and then make sure I'm set to front. So for this area, I would probably jump into the front view. So the negative Y view over here, I'd zoom in here, and then maybe I'd have a wire hanging down here, going back and forth, looping down, maybe it would skip this corner and then it could snake back and forth down the side of this all the way down the bottom until it's no longer in view here on the left side. And then as always, once you get your main wires placed, go ahead and change your radius to a smaller number, say maybe 0 0.025, and then just start adding detail wires here that help further embellish these wires. And again, I'm just doing this very quickly, very sketchy, as an example of what maybe you would do. But as usual, just even this really quick sketch already looks kind of cool having wires hanging here. Another area you could add detail would be this curved bridge far in the back here. So in our camera view, it's this bridge here. So if we hold shift, we can move our 3D cursor back here. And then again, we're just gonna be drawing kind of ribbons of wires hanging from this. So we'll start from the back here, have them hang down, maybe they attach to the bottom. And then this one can go all the way up to the top and just vary the points that they're connected and how deep the droop is, and then just have it droop down. As always, you could just go through here and add your detail, add your breaks, and just generally make this a little bit more chaotic and interesting. Because this area is pretty far from the camera, you're going to need to make your lines a little bit thicker potentially, and add a little bit more density of wires up here for them to even be noticeable from the camera. Moving on to the next area that you can add detail to, it's this really large archway here in the very back. So again, hold shift, move your 3D cursor back here by shift right clicking on this column back here. And then since this is really, really far from the camera, we're going to need to make our radius a lot larger just so these lines are even seen. So in this case, I would suggest something like maybe 0 0.075 to make them a lot thicker, but still be able to be seen from the camera. For these details, I would probably suggest you draw them in the camera view, as it's really difficult to tell what is in view when you're looking at the entirety of this archway. So for these details, maybe we could just have them start outside of the camera view, go down, maybe connect somewhere over here, go to the edge, and then just start snaking back and forth across this, and then go down this way and disappear off to the side. You could also have this area here branch, maybe go down and disappear behind the side of this building. And then as usual, you would just go through here with a slightly smaller brush, add your details, maybe they skip lines, do some loops, hang down, and just general chaos back here. And then we have two more obvious areas to add wires. So let's quickly finish these up before we finish the entire lesson. 
this right wall over here has a lot of different model details that we could add wires to to add further detail. So in this case, we can hold shift, right click on this wall, anywhere on this wall here, and then don't forget you need to switch from the front view to the side view because we're drawing it this direction instead. And then in our right viewport, we're going to rotate our perspective view so we can get a better view of this right wall. And then you can just start deciding where you'd like to draw these lines. Now you can see here that this bridge and this wall here is kind of getting in the way. So I'm going to go over here to the left side collection, turn this off, and I have a bit better of an unobstructed view. And then before we start drawing, make sure you switch your radius to something a little bit smaller, maybe 0 0.035. And then we can start at this bracket. We could draw down here and just find this area here and connect it. Maybe lead it down to this hole in the wall or the wire just above it. Have it drape across this. And then if you want, you can draw from the camera view instead if you prefer that. So maybe we have this go down, go up underneath this step and kind of stop just below it. Or we can have it stretch from here down behind these pipes really up to you where you want these wires to go. And then as usual, just add detail to these wires to help bulk them out. And then as the very last example, let's return to the first example we had when we started learning how to draw with grease pencil. We're going to add some lines to the side of these stairs. So we can hold shift, and then we're going to place our 3D cursor on the side of one of these shorter steps. So I'm going to place it on the very first step here, right on the side. And in this case, you want to choose the shorter step to place your 3D cursor, because these are all in the exact same plane in terms of their depth, However, this one is a lot longer. So if we put our 3D cursor here and started drawing a line, we'll notice that it's floating away from these steps. But if I change it back and put it on the side of the shorter step and start drawing a line between these, you'll notice now that it just looks like it attaches to the bottom of the larger step, but it's still in the correct plane for all the short steps. So let's control Z this. And then this time we're gonna be using a lot smaller line. Let's go all the way down to a 0.02. These are a lot smaller details and they're closer to the camera so they don't need to have quite as thick lines to be seen. So for this example, maybe we'll start from the bottom of this larger step, have it droop down, meet the smaller one. We can skip steps. We can have it go directly to the next step and then just have them go down. You can see here that I actually missed the, the distance here for this line. So I would want to be a little bit more precise when I'm drawing this for my actual render. But you can get an idea of what you would want to do here. You can also add multiple lines here. So you can have some skip steps that you missed before and then go between others. Maybe this one's broken and it's just hanging down. With this last example out of the way, these are by no means the only areas that you could add wires to improve the look of your render. But this should at least give you plenty of ideas for your own version. Before we move on to the next lesson, I did promise you that I would show you how to import some pre-drawn wires for your scene. So to do this, we're going to go over here and we're going to leave draw mode for now. We're going to go back to object mode. Now go up to the top and choose file, then go to append down here it has a paper clip next to it. So we can click this, then navigate to the class assets that you downloaded at the very beginning of this class. And then we'll choose this file here called grease pencil wires append. We'll choose this one, and then we'll go down here and click this blue button that says Append. Then we'll go to the Object folder, double click into this, and then choose GP Wires. And then here I wrote down the thicknesses that I used for the wires in my scene. So I had lines that are 0 0.035, 0 0.02, and 0 0.01, just as a guide for your own reference. With this object selected, now we can click Append one last time. And now you have all of my wires loaded directly into your scene. So these are all the wires that I drew for the original render. If you do plan on using these wires, the ones you just appended, you are going to want to hide your original wires because they're going to conflict with some of these others. So to hide the ones that we just drew, all you would do is click on these two icons here, the eyeball and then the small camera icon. So this has left your drawings within the scene, but they're just hidden for now so we can't see them in the render. Now we can zoom out and see all the different lines that I drew on the original version of this file. You're going to also want to go over here and turn on this left side collection so you can see all the walls and objects within the scene. And that's it. You can either spend some time finishing your own drawings or you can proceed to the next lesson with me and use these appended wires for your own render. In the next lesson, we'll use grease pencil to add some new details to our render. I'll see you there.